Mr. Speaker, I beg to present, to present for second reading a bill shortly entitled Health and Citizen Security Le Levy Amendment, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I, there will be no need, I hope, for a, a long discussion on that, on that bill, Mr. Speaker. The help, I want to report this honorable house that the health and security levy has been implemented on goods, it's being collected at customs, Mr. Speaker, and then the transition with all things, Mr. Speaker, just like that, there will be some rough patches in the transition, Mr. Speaker, but in the, in the, in the main, it's being collected at the customs on imports, and there seems to be a pretty smooth transition, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, I just want to end to mention something that the member for Commerce, the Minister for Commerce said, Mr. Speaker. In the beginning, the health and security levy was pronounced in the budget. So to believe that there is a surprise can't be, cannot be true. Because the, in the budget, we said that be a, there would be a health and security levy of 2.5%, Mr. Speaker. And, Mr. Speaker, for the abundance of clarity, because we still find people spreading this, that propaganda, Mr. Speaker. There is no health and security levy on any goods that was zero rated or VAT exempt. There is no health and security levy on any goods that was zero rated or VAT exempt. This means that if before a full item had no VAT or was zero rated, there is no security levy on these goods, Mr. Speaker. That's it, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, but you know, you, I don't do Facebook, but you see the deliberate plans to create confusion in this country. To destabilize the country, Mr. Speaker, to get people in a state of uproar so the country can't move. That's why they glorify crime. You believe it's only now St. Lucia ever had crime, Mr. Speaker? You believe St. Lucia was perfect before 21st July? Only now. We only started now to have some crime. Only now. I don't, I don't think crime is justified. I'm appalled. And when I try to say anything about crime, they try to ridicule me and to make an excuse and they get support by saying I'm ridiculous. Because I say that crime must be solved by the police with the help of the citizenship. The, of the citizens of the country, crime will, crime, that's, these are the people who have to handle the crime. And the government must create the enabling environment, must, must create the policy framework and give the police the tools to do their work, Mr. Speaker, which you've started to do and which you continue to do. I just understand today we got four drones, Mr. Speaker, from Taiwan to help the police in the in the That's all I said. They got 30 vehicles. We have 70 recruits being 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 trained. No, right now the vetting process is happening for them to come. We are repairing the police stations. Last week we went to the Minister of Infrastructure. We went to the police station in, 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 in Viewfort, Speaker, which has been refurbished for the police to have better conditions to work because I said that we're building the Northern Divisional Headquarters in Grosile for the police to have better conditions to work when they kept the police in these conditions from 2016. 2016, the police were in Grosile. From 2016, when there were plans to build a new police station, they refused to do it. And near the election in 2020, they bought some building and said they'll transfer the police to that building. And in the meantime, they're having dinners to get the police equipment. And tea parties with oh, people oh, just oh, in oh, yellow oh, and hats. And then, like, 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 modeling. And modeling, modeling. And that's how you treat your police. And that's how you love them. That's how you treat them. But you know what, Mr. Speaker? We increased the budget to the federal police this year. And we put money in the training vote for the police. So the police are going to get training, Mr. Speaker. And only last week, we wrote the government of Morocco to get some 
more children for the police, but unfortunately, there's a hurricane, so I don't know what will happen. Earthquake. Uh, earthquake. I don't know what I'm saying. That's how we treat the police. That's how we treat the police. We don't treat the police by attacking a commissioner when, when she's appointed and says she didn't go to school in, in Scotland, very different, FBI school somewhere. That's not how we treat the police. We don't treat the police by attacking the commissioner on her say. That's not how we treat the police. We say if you have evidence against the commissioner, you bring it forward. We don't treat the police by saying that I'm, I'm the commissioner's godfather when you know that's not true. That's not how we treat the police. And that's why this health and security levy is going to help the police further. So, Mr. Speaker, the health and security levy, Mr. Speaker, as I said, it's working for goods. It's working for goods. But for services, Mr. Speaker, the first service providers came to us and they say that there is difficulty in <coughs> collection. So immediately, and I want to make that clear, <coughs> because I read somewhere that how, we, how it's going to be refunded, immediately I want to say that there was no health and security levy on the provision of services. We gave them, how many months? Two months? Two months, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> and we are going to implement the health and security level and services starting from the 1st of October this year. And here's why we did that, Mr. Speaker. Because we believe in dialogue. We believe in discussion. We believe in getting the business people together because this government has done more for the business people than any government, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, they went all over the world and saying that if I was Prime Minister, I would not be able to attract investment. Nobody would come here if I, was, if I was Prime Minister. I wouldn't be able to attract investment. You understand? Because people wouldn't listen to me. I won't tell you why they said. I won't tell you why. If I tell you why, they will say I'm something else, as usual. But that's what they told the people of St. Lucia, that I would not be able to attract any investment. Right now, there is more investment in St. Lucia in the last five years than the last six years, Mr. Speaker. There is more interest in St. Lucia. The last time there was so much interest in St. Lucia was when the Labour Party was in power in the year 1997, 2001. 2006. Right now, Mr. Speaker, investors are knocking on the door, Mr. Speaker, and you see the fruits. You see the hotels going up, Mr. Speaker. So when we decided to create a neighbor environment, because the health and security levy was a revenue measure, but we said because of the after effects of COVID, we'll give the businesses a break. We had amnesty for the business people who owed us VAT and who had fines and penalties for not paying the tax, Mr. Speaker. We had an amnesty for them. You know what they said? They said we did it for our friends. I did it for my friends. The same man who could not attract investment. The same man who people would not come here because I couldn't speak. I don't know if I'm a mumu. They say I couldn't speak, so investors won't come in St. Lucia. The same man. When the investors are coming, and when we remove the VAT, they say it's because these same investors are my friends. So how, if you can win, if you can gain anything with these people. So Mr. Speaker, the service providers came to us and said to us, the way we are, we, cal we are calculating the health and security level and services will cause double taxation. So we sat down and we, listen we listened to them, we spoke to them. And we came out with a formula of how we will work the consideration, which is the, the, the amount of money that will be liable to VAT, Mr. Speaker. And if you look at section, the amendment to section two, you will see the following, Mr. Speaker. Section two of the Principal Act is amended under the definition of the word consideration by deleting paragraph A and substitu substituting the following. The total amount in money or kind paid or payable for the supply by a person directly or indirectly, including fees and charges, other than tax payable under this act, reduced by price discount or rebates, 
allowed, excluding value added tax paid or payable on the supply of a service in accordance with the value added tax, stamp duty paid or payable in accordance with the stamp duty act, and other duties and levies paid or payable under any other enacting, enactment. What this means, Mr. Speaker? Let me give you an example of a policeman or a teacher or civil servant building a, building a, getting a mortgage to build a house, Mr. Speaker. I mean, Mr. Speaker, I can't wait once the ducks are in order to make the announcement on housing. That's another big announcement that will come soon, Mr. Speaker. And you'll hear them, you'll hear, you'll hear you and cry when that comes, Mr. Speaker. I just can't wait. I just can't wait. So you'll hear. So before we do it, you'll hear the, you know what I mean? When you have it. But anyhow. So if, <laughs> see, see, Mr. Speaker, the Minister of Housing is looking at me, you know? <laughs> he's looking at me, Mr. Speaker, because he's the Minister of Housing. So he'll be okay. He'll be okay. So, Mr. Speaker, the, that means if a policeman, a teacher, or civil servant is being a house, Mr. Speaker, when you are calculating the legal fees that must be on the house, they calculate it, the, the lawyer's fees, the lawyer fees first and last. <laughs> <laughs> they, have, Mr. Speaker, they decide that they pay in the stamp duty, all the other fees and the lawyer fees, and they come down and they pay, then you have the health and security level, levy and then VAT. What was happening, Mr. Speaker, is they would have had to pay health and security levy on the stamp duty, which was not right. That's double taxation, because they have paid the government stamp duty. So what we said is we will, when we are calculating the, H, the health and security levy, we will exclude, we will subtract the stamp duty, and any other duties or taxes are already paid to the government, and you will pay the health and security level on the 2.5% of that total and then the VAT. So what we've done, Mr. Speaker, is that we've understood that you can't have, it can't be a case of double taxation, nor can it be a, a case of, of putting on due pressure on people who have, who have already paid their duties their, due, their stamp duty to build a house and build their mortgages. So that, that is what this amendment speaks to, Mr. Speaker. So it's, it's an amendment that actually reduces, reduces the revenue that the government can collect. Reduces it because you have to exclude, you have to exclude the duties already paid to the government. Mr. Speaker, again, it's because of discussion and because of wanting to improve the lot to make it more easy, make it easier for people to be able to, to build their houses, etc. And all these other services, Mr. Speaker. You remove the duties, the taxes you pay. So if you have a service, Mr. Speaker, and in cooling that service, you have already paid VAT on that input for that service, you have to exclude it. That's, that's what all about, Mr. Speaker. And we, the, the Chamber of Commerce, represented by the Chamber, the Chamber of Commerce representing the service providers, the lawyers, etc. We they came and they had a discussion, Mr. Speaker, with us, and we decided that we we would not be high and mighty and play as if what everything we do is right. We said, yes, you are right. You understood. We went to, we went to cabinet, discussed with my colleagues, and we said, yes, that is fair and reasonable, and we will make the change, Mr. Speaker. So this is the change. We never said so. We did it, we did it, Mr. Speaker, and that is what this amendment is all about, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, on the matter of, of the cost of living, Mr. Speaker, I understand and I empathize with the people of this country when they speak about the cost of the price, Mr. Speaker. Because, Mr. Speaker, all the commentators, they haven't made a distinction between cost and price. But well, you know, some of them that I hear on the talk, on the, what, what do you call them, the town hall meetings. You know, we created a good thing in the week. We had town hall Tuesday. I mean, this little party is really innovative, you know. We started town hall Tuesday. 
They laugh at us when they started. They say we are free of the people. We are to go in town hall. Now every Sunday, they what they call it town hall. Every Sunday. <laughs> I mean, these guys are rest of the girls, you know. They laugh at us. They, laugh at, they said we, we, we were speaking to, to we were speaking to the converted in a little room. Go inside, talk to people. Now they have town hall. You know. Contrary to what you heard, Mr. Speaker, there is a difference between cost and price. Let me tell you the difference. If you import that glass, okay, and you pay a dollar for it, if you have to pay five dollars to get this in Lucia, it's a hundred and five dollars. If when you get this in Lucia, you have to pay duty of ten dollars, the, the cost of that glass it becomes $115. If you have to pay $15 in VAT, the cost of that glass is $130. That's the cost. But the price of that glass is when you put it in the store, the markup that the person puts on it for their profit, it becomes the price. So what does the government have control of? In price control goods, the government has control of the price, not the cost. And you know, and Mr. Speaker, this is what hurts me. All over the world, we have issues with inflation. Inflation last year was 6%, and the Central Bank of the United States is screaming the Federal Reserve Bank that no matter how they try to no matter how they try to adjust interest rates, inflation is stubborn. It just is not reducing. You hear in England, inflation. In Barbados, inflation. All over, Mr. Speaker. I don't like it. You think I like to see the cost of goods, the price of goods and services in the supermarket climb like that, Mr. Speaker? I have constituents. We eat at home. So we are, I understand the, 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 the prices, Mr. Speaker, the prices, but we can't control the cost, Mr. Speaker. So how do we do? To control the price, we only can put the goods under price control. And the business, the business people are saying that they, they think price control is aggressive, they think price control is something that we should not do. But Mr. Speaker, but Mr. Speaker, We are saying that in the pricing structure, the businesses should take consideration of what is happening to the consumer. That's what we say, Mr. Speaker. That's what we say. And we are saying, Mr. Speaker, that in the pricing structure, they must also look at turnover. The turnover, if they're selling more, if there's more activity, Mr. Speaker, if there's more cash flow, they must see how it's reflected in the, in the in the pricing structure, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, what this government is doing for the Ministry of Labor is, and you know, Mr. Speaker, again, there's so much misinformation. There's something called inflation or stagflation, where the prices continue to spiral, 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 Mr. Speaker. But we understand that because of the increase in prices, the disposable income of the people of, the, of this country is getting more difficult and more trying. We understand that. We've taken some measures. We understand that, Mr. Speaker. So the next measure is we are, the Ministry of Labor has been instructed to speak to, and the minister has formed a committee, Mr. Speaker, and I want to assure the Chamber of Commerce and the public of St. Lucia that the findings of this, that committee will be made public for discussion before it goes into legislation. That's our style, that's how we act, that's what we did in all, all significant legislation, that's what we did. We didn't go and sign a, 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 an agreement with DSH in private. 
all of the major policy initiatives that we've taken, we go into public debate, Mr. Speaker. So, we've got one preliminary report on a minimum livable wage. That report was circulated to the cabinet only and to the cabinet, Mr. Speaker, and this livable, minimum livable wage is being discussed. There has been no decision as yet. The Chamber of Commerce and the public will be involved in the discussion, Mr. Speaker. But hopefully, I hope, Mr. Speaker, that very soon and possibly before Independence Day next year, we can announce a minimum livable wage for the people of St. Lucia. But several things that have been taken in consideration, Mr. Speaker. In stagflation, com how competitive, competitive our country will be, how it will affect expansion of business, etc. Several things, Mr. Speaker, be taken into consideration. And this government and the Minister of Commerce and the Minister of Labor are cognizant of these things and it will take time to do it, Mr. Speaker. But whilst we are doing that, we are getting relief in, in, other, in other areas. And they laughed again at when we started, you know, it was an 80 year old, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the contempt that these guys have for people, the contempt and the scorn. One day, I said on a political platform in, 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 in the market steps that they took elderly ladies and bring them to match. They made a big fuss with me. They put it on, on, on Facebook. I have no respect for elderly people. I have this and that. I'm so, I'm just wicked fella. I attack elderly people, Mr. Speaker. But the same people, when the Minister of Health gives relief to people eight years and over, they attack him. The same people, you know. Mr. Speaker, last Sunday, a lady in, in my church, you know, I go to church, Mr. Speaker, you know that? On Sunday, and I used to go all the time. Eh? I, I'm not. I didn't start because because I, I I'm, I'm a politician, you know. So you might hear them say I, I don't go to communion, but you know what I mean. That's what, that's the platform. That's the platform rhetoric. That's what you know. Is you? Then me, me, me stop. You the one. You the talking? <laughs> After confession. <laughs> so, Mr. Speaker, and, the, Mr. Speaker, and I can say it, Mr. Speaker, because I know he wouldn't mind me saying that. The, 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 the great T.C. Brown, Mr. Speaker, his mother, she was 80 years last Sunday. And she, 80 years, she had a church, a big church celebration in my church. And if you see the lady, you'll never say she's 80 years. And I want to wish her a happy birthday again. So could you please give her a round of applause for me, please? This is Brown's mother. 80 years old, Mr. Speaker. The lady looks well. We are living longer. We are living much longer these days. So when the minister and the census will show it, by the way, we need to get the census out back, um, in, in, in a serious way. Soon, it needs to be out soon. We'll show the amount of people, people are living longer. So when the minister starts with 80 years, they ridicule him, as usual. I guess they'll say he's ridiculous. They ridicule him, Mr. Speaker. Then we take the next step. Hypo then the first step was pregnant women and maternal pre, maternal and, 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 and prenatal care for pregnant women. They ridicule us again, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, you know why? There are, there are serious issues with the population of St. Lucia. The Minister of Education will tell you that there are schools that don't have enough students, Mr. Speaker. They have to merge classes. I'm not saying anything about that. I don't know if I don't know to quote me and say I said that. All I said is that there are serious issues with the population of St. Lucia. In fact, I heard Mia Motley say two weeks ago that Barbados may have to import people. Because she had serious issues with her national insurance. Serious, so Mr. Speaker, these are serious issues, you know. And when I hear an opposition, when a government brings these issues in, into, the, into the discussion, instead of an opposition becomes constructive and gives ideas 
and say what they can do. Just lies and nonsense and propaganda. I mean, we pay for CET fees. And, oh, they were in the school without for CET fees, but they went to school. I mean, all kinds. I mean, oh, the, the schools, the children fighting in school. Mr. Speaker, fighting in schools is not a good thing. It has got worse now because of social media and because parents are interfering. And I think that there should not be any violence in schools, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, people have children have fought in schools for a long time. It's not right. It's not supposed to happen, especially what's happening now. Guns and knives and things in schools. But the fact is, there's been these things are not new things. They are worse now with social media. I'm not condoning it. Because they say I condone it, I'm not condoning it. All I'm saying is that do not always sell your country short. Don't always tell the world your country is the worst place in the world. Stop doing that. So we started with health and security levy. We started with maternal care, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you know, you know the amount of young mothers who get pregnant and the next time they see the doctor is in the hospital when they're having the baby? Mr. Speaker, but these people have no conscience. They have no conscience, Mr. Speaker. A number of mothers, young mothers, only see a doctor when they go to the hospital to conceive. To give birth, sorry. So when the minister says, listen to me, you can get your, what do you call it? Your ultrasounds, your blood test free. Instead of supporting that, they attack it. They attack it. And that is what the health and security level will do as we advance towards universal health care, Mr. Speaker. Then the fourth stage is not perfect. Mr. Speaker, tell me the country that has had a health insurance policy that is smooth sailing. In the great United States, Obamacare was confusion up to now. The Republicans are trying to, 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 to do something to with, with, with Obamacare. But here, we are starting with universal health care, being funded by some by sources and then by the health and security levy, but they are complaining. <coughs> so now we're saying that if you, get, if you get attention for your hypertension, hypertension, then you'll get for your diabetes, Mr. Speaker. And that's lifestyle. I come back to lifestyle again, Mr. Speaker. Preventative diseases, non-communicable diseases, Mr. Speaker. When we came here, and, it's, and I find it very, 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 very strange that some people who are always heavy on hairstyle, heavy on exercise, used to call people big belly. All in a sudden, Mr. Speaker, they've got quiet. They've got quiet on lifestyle. They've got quite an exercise, Mr. Speaker. They've got quiet all in a sudden. And you see how the men and women on this side look, Mr. Speaker? The member for, 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 for Cassius North, he's lost a lot of weight. <coughs> I want to congratulate him for that. <coughs> and, and you see what he's doing. He has a thing, he has a thing in the cabinet. I don't know what's in there. I don't know what's there. <laughs> I don't know what's there. It's, it's a mix. <laughs> You see, Mr. Speaker? You know, Mr. Speaker, when I changed my lifestyle, you know, I mean, let me tell you something. Health and security. Mr. Speaker, do you know, Mr. Speaker? And I'll say that because I want the public to see how these things rebound. Bounce back and come back, and that's why I'm here today. Bounce back. Bounce back, Mr. Speaker. One day I had a meeting in Bocage. <laughs> by the Bocage bus stop. And a bus with hotel workers was passing. So I stopped my meeting. I stopped my meeting, kept quiet to allow the bus to pass. The next Saturday on, on UWB Media, Mr. Speaker. The next Saturday, on UWP media was all over the place. I am so sick. I'm a sick guy. I have high blood pressure and diabetes. They cut my toes. 
You don't see us, Mr. Cook. They cut my toes. I have, <laughs> I'm toeless. <laughs> you don't be, you know, you don't be, be. you don't be. be. And Mr. Speaker, next day on social media, the leader never condemned it. Never. Today, God has helped me that I've seen the day when the people of St. Lucia, with the help of my colleagues, my health is okay. I could die tonight, like any of us here. But Mr. Speaker, and I've become the Prime Minister of St. Lucia. So, Mr. Speaker, I'm saying all that to tell you how life has a way of boomeranging. It comes back at you, Mr. Speaker. So that's why right now, Mr. Speaker, all the, all the guns, literally and figuratively, are aimed at me. That's why, Mr. Speaker, because of the facts that against all odds, I want to thank again the men and women of here, here and the men and women of labor, Mr. Speaker, against all odds, the change came. So, Mr. Speaker, this amendment, hopefully, and we may have to come back. We may have to come back. Because you see, the health and security le levy, like that, it impacts on all goods and services, all goods. So we may have to come back for an amendment. But we'll be matured enough. We'll be matured enough to come back and say to people, these are the changes that we have to make, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I implore members to support it, Mr. Speaker, and I ask the Chamber of Commerce for the cooperation, Mr. Speaker, because apart from the health, Mr. Speaker, that, si that situation about women, sanitary, what I want to use a politi political record. What's the political record, Mr. Health? Sanitary, what's it? Sanitary products. Sanitary products. Is a, that's, a correct, that's a correct political... Sanitary products, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, again, he who feels it most knows it, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, do you know that there are a number of young women who have to make a choice between buying bread for their children and buying, the, and buying sanitary products, Mr. Speaker? But well, there's our conscience. What makes us solution? What makes us, why don't we have more empathy for our neighbor? Why can we stop allowing politics to remove our conscience, to take off the humanity in our souls, to lie to people so much that we, 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 we've, we've taken off all the humanity, we've, we've taken off all the reason because we've lost government? All, I mean, this, 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 is hurtful. this is hurtful, Mr. Speaker, for a set of men and women, because they're not in government, they're under the surrogates. To, to expunge from their being any level of humanity or empathy. So you want to criticize a government for removing taxes on these products, Mr. Speaker? And you want to encourage people to attack the government for that? Instead of saying, so hot, thank you, member for, for me, the, the enough. Thank you very much. So hot. <coughs> You want to attack, you want to encourage people to post on Facebook, to take a tag from, go and put it on thing and say, look at what the government doing just to attack Pierre and, and, and the Labour Party. Mr. Speaker, why we cannot get our country on a footing where we can collectively improve ourselves? And they say to us, we did the same thing in opposition. We did not. What we did in opposition was because of their behavior. How they behaved, they gave us further by their behavior. So you think if they had come to, if they had come to the parliament with a health and security levy to fund health care, we would ever oppose it? You think if they had come to parliament with a health and security levy to support the police, we would ever attack it? You think they had come to parliament to remove VAT on sanitary, on, on sanitary products we would ever remove we'll ever attack it you think you'll come to cut into the parliament to remove vat and building materials you think you would ever say that you don't eat plywood that's where we that's where we are mr speaker 
That's where we are. That's where the opposition is. And Exactly. We don't eat plywood. That, that is, that, that, that's what they say. And the other story is that we did, we removed the vat and materials to make rich people build houses. That's all. You can see it. You can say that, not me. <laughs> you can say that, not me. You understand? There are certain things I can't say. So you say, you say your thing, say your thing, not me, all right? I mean, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, you think you can say that? That we put, we remove tax for rich with the blouses. And some people are calling, a guy call and say, anyhow, forget that. Mr. Speaker, I urge this honorable house to support the Health and Security Level Amendment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.